Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Those who are in Zoom virtually participating with us, as well as those who are here, here in the conference room. I'm Wendy Sims Moting calling to order our Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022 Board of Education meeting um, back into uh, open session. I also want to make a couple of notes that uh, President Minosa will be participating shortly by vir virtual. She'll be in the virtual land participating here. And Ms. Kate Ford is absent today. So we will move to language access. Thank you very much. We have Spanish interpretation available in person here in the boardroom and also on Zoom. And we also have uh, ASL interpretation available. Muy buenas tardes. Tenemos interpretación al español disponible por medio de Zoom y aquí en persona en la sala del consejo. Gracias. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And also the board took action in closed session to appoint Tony Ramirez for the position of chief technology officer. The vote was in the motion was made by Ms. Caps and seconded by Ms. Minos uh, with a 4-0. And the 4-0 is the fact that Ms. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Ford is absent today. So that will be our unanimous votes. Okay. And that action was done. So that was completed closed section. And now um, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Actually, we should have that next, but it won't for that. Now we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I took it out of order. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Please rise and face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. OK, now we'll just uh, go to the superintendent's report. Thank you again, Vice President Sims Moton. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, those of you joining us here in person and also on Zoom. Uh, we had an incredible opening of schools. The energy has been kept up. Uh, lots of positivity, lots of joy, lots of fun. It almost feels like normal, but I hate to even try to say the word normal. I've learned my lesson in the last two years, so that is hard to come by these days. Um, I want to start off with acknowledging and, um, a couple of people. Ms. Gina Cuevas from Food Services was somebody that worked really closely with us right before we started um, the school year because uh, as you know, with planning for food and transportation and everything, not yet, everything that um, we have to do to get ready, she was somebody that we tapped into, has been a long time employee in Food Services, that was really able to bring us up to date on some of the things that needed to be in place and I just wanna give a great shout out and thank you to Gina Cuevas. Um, I also want to thank Ms. Kim Hernandez and her team for um, also working with Student Transportation of America. It was touch and go there for a bit. We had a lot of plans. As you know, last year we had to use a lot of our own employees for transportation because we have had such a challenge here in Santa Barbara to get enough bus drivers. And it's not just a challenge for our school district, but also in our community for um, our local public transportation company. And so I want to thank Kim for just really working through uh, all the details that we needed to. At some point, we thought children that come to us from ranch areas might not even be able to get transportation. We had school staff, which I also want to thank, who were ready to go to pick up students if we needed to, because everybody in Santa Barbara Unified does that. We just all have all hands on deck to get things ready. But again, thanks to Kim and working with them closely, we were able to transport all students first day of school, and we have, haven't had any problems yet, uh, but we'll create plan B, plan B just in case. So thank you, Kim, for that work. Um, next, I would like to call up Dr. Simmons, the principal of Santa Barbara High School. As uh, was started as a practice last year, we really wanted to have an opportunity to have our principals have a chance to come and let the board know a little bit about their schools so that you can also get a point of view and an understanding from that leader on what is happening and what makes their schools so special. So thank you for being with us. Dr. Simmons, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Rose Munoz and Virtual Land, wherever you are, board members and Dr. Maldonado and Cabinet. My name is Dr. Elise Simmons, and I'm the very proud principal of Santa Barbara High School. Thank you for having me here this evening and to share what we've been up to at Santa Barbara High. There's our beautiful school. So welcome to Casa de los Dons, or Home of the Dons. Next slide. 
This is the focus of our work, our students. This is actually taken from Friday Night Football this year. That's our Don's Den, and you can see them already in their gear, ready to go and cheer our, our Don's football team on to a big win. So there they are. Next slide. We have a theme for this year, and I'm, I'm bummed that Kate Ford's not here. She loves her themes. The theme for this year is the rise of a new Don. And we've learned a lot through our experiences navigating the pandemic. And like the sunrise, the pandemic and our learnings have shined a light on what matters most and signals new beginnings of all kinds. Next slide. At the end of last year, we recognized that we needed to update our mission and our school-wide learner outcomes. And staff provided their input in a survey. And our site leadership team came together on, on right at the beginning of this year to come up with our new mission and what we call the four C's. And you can see here our four C's are courage to learn, collaboration, communication, and creativity. Next slide. On August 17th, our entire staff, classified, certificated, came together to um, examine and learn more about our, the four C's. And you can see here, this is just a few of the posters that were created by staff as they talked about each C and what it would look like and sound like in the classroom. And our next steps will be to continue to understand the four C's and in particular, again, really unpacking what they look like and sound like in the classroom, but also in all spaces, our office spaces, our hallways, out on the field. And we wanna make sure that we're teaching these skills, fostering them in our youth, and just making sure that they're fully integrated into our school culture. Next slide. At Santa Barbara High, this is our mission. Our goal is to support students to do their best, have the courage to learn from their experiences, reflect and refine their plans and strategies for success, and develop their character and values. And we have, I wanted to share with you three areas in which we um, go after this mission and make sure it comes alive for our students. And so next slide. We have a thriving performing arts department, and you can see here, um, our, we have our concert band, our choir, our dance team. Um, we are the only high school in town that has a dance program as part of our performing arts. Um, there's our marching band, and then we're, the auditions for the Crucible, that's this fall's play. So look forward to those dates. They're gonna be around Thanksgiving time, the first week or so in November. We're really excited um, to see what our new theater teacher can do. Um, next slide. We have seven career tech ed pathways, the Visual Arts and Design Academy, or VADA, Construction Tech, and Culinary Arts. Next slide. Thank you. Our Computer Science Academy, Sports Medicine, and the Multimedia Arts and Design Academy, or known as MAD. And in the upper right-hand corner, um, we have a brand new, this year, we started planning it for last year, pathway. That's called the, trans, the translation and interpretation pathway. The first class will be ta taught terms three and four. And we're um, the first high school in California, California to actually offer this pathway in Spanish for Spanish language. Most, most schools do ASL. Um, so we're really excited to get this up and going for our students and for our community. We're going to create many, many interpreters and translators. Um, and it was also, we received a multi-year grant to help create this and implement it. Um, and I just to dish, give a shout out to our lead teacher. Her name is Allison Mendoza, and she's in her second year with us at Santa Barbara High. Next slide. Student athletes. We have an amazing athletic program. And la this is a picture of all of our student athletes that were part of teams that won the Southern Section CIF Academic Achievement. They're part of teams. Um, there were six of them. Girls cross country, girls water polo, boys water polo, girls volleyball, boys soccer, and track and field for girls. So as a team, they had the highest total GPA in all of Southern California. So we are the only high school that had six out of all of Southern California. We definitely had the top number. And this is them standing outside um, the stadium where they get to go, Anaheim Stadium, where they get honored and recognized. So we're really proud of creating strong student athletes. Next slide. 
And if for some reason you can't find a pathway, a sport, performing arts program, we have over 35 student-led clubs as well as a vibrant yearbook program and school newspaper called The Forge. And if you don't know, our school newspaper is the oldest and longest running school newspaper in California. And um, we're excited to, to welcome Club Rush, which happens in the month of September, where the students set up, there's an example, a table of their club, and students come and sign up for all the clubs that they're interested in. Next slide. This is our Don's crew. They're welcoming you right now, but they're also welcoming our new students to Santa Barbara High School. Um, and they're glad that we're here. They're glad that we're here. Go to the next slide. And the, the we're glad that you're here is a practice that all Santa Barbara High School teachers are, are implementing this year. So as part of our new beginnings, we're going to begin each day and each class this way where staff is at the door greeting our students to help build community. Helps with a little bit of supervision as well. They have their learning objectives posted, and there they are on the right-hand side. What am I learning? Why am I learning it? How will I know that I've learned it? That last one's a big one for students. It's the success criteria. It really sets the groundwork for the academic learnings that's going to happen in that classroom that, for that day. The A stands for attendance. Great reminder for all of our teachers to take attendance at the beginning of class. It helps us with our responding to behavior and supporting students. And then while teachers are taking attendance, students are engaged in what we call a do now. And a do now is an independent, quiet activity that's accessible for all, all students to engage in. So this is going to make sure that each class is set up for success and engagement. Next slide. So. Thank you for having me here this evening. I want to leave on the note that Santa Barbara High School is the best high school in town because of our deep traditions and our commitment to diversity and excellence in all that we do. So if you have any questions, I'm here for you. And you're always welcome to come visit. Just let me know, and I'll give you a tour. And you can check out our beautiful campus and all of our amazing programs and students and staff. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Simmons. Um, and hashtag we are unified. <laughs> next, uh, next uh, board members, uh, as you may have seen in my communication this week to parents and staff and to you, we're starting a new campaign uh, with this idea of, of we are unified and recognizing heroes of the heart. And really continuing, we started last year with unsung heroes. We changed it this year to heroes of the heart. So we can show that next. Within minutes of sending out my communication yesterday, we had nominations. And I can't help but just take a few minutes to share those with you. And what I'll do is I'll continue to curate those nominations, share some of these in the board meeting, but I'll also make sure that they're in our main webpage for everyone to recognize the amazing staff and employees that we have. And anybody can nominate anybody else. So it's you know employees, staff, parents, teachers, everybody that's part of our community. So first, we're going to start with um, the first one that came in right away, which is Mr. Iacono. Uh, and you can see here from Santa Barbara Junior High School, the nominee said uh, he's not only a kind, encouraging, passionate teacher, they're impressed with see him take time out of a busy day to support the students playing after school volleyball. Thank you, Mr. Iacono. Next. I think we have many reasons to thank this next person, Ms. Ann Peek, who is our Human Resources Director. Uh, the nominee, nominee said she's a wonderful human being and cares about every employee in the district. We can all feel it. And I want to do an extra shout out to Ann because, as you know, the Human Resources Department has relentlessly worked throughout the summer and at the end of spring last year to make sure all our classrooms are fully staffed, all our positions are filled. And uh, I will uh, just selfishly ask if there's any math special ed teachers or world language teachers out there we're always looking for them that's always a need in our district and many districts next we have esperanza villegas she is the first face of the district she welcomes everyone and treats everyone with respect and kindness so thank you espy as we lovingly call her and then we have donna who is supremely compassionate teacher 
develops lifelong bonds with her students and families through the many things she does. And um, she is a teacher at the Montessori program at Adams Elementary School. We also have, oh, I'm missing my notes here. We are missing her name. Of course, I'm going to ask Adriana to help me here with our next hero, Melissa Castle, uh, one of the most outstanding teachers, uh, a human being and caring friend. Uh, she deserves the award, respect, and support due to the many uh, families she has been able to find and help out, uh, and I believe she's at San Marcos High School. Next, we have Kathy Solis at Cleveland Elementary School. She is going above and beyond in everything she does and is amazingly helpful, kind, and pleasant to be around. And last but not least, even though he refused to let me take his picture, Oscar. <laughs> Our very own Oscar. Very humble and caring. Um, John Dent made this nomination. He pushes himself to go the extra mile, never backs down from a challenge. We value his contributions and how he always does it with a smile and a can-do attitude. These people exemplify the spirit of Santa Barbara Unified, the uh, hashtag we are unified theme that we are going to carry on throughout the year. And I want to encourage everyone to please send these our way. Send it to ask the superintendent at sbunified.org. We will continue to highlight all the amazing human beings of Santa Barbara. Uh, so with that, I just want to close out with saying that we will have uh, the Adams Solar Panel Ribbon cutting this August 31st at 2 p.m. All are welcome. More information to be coming to all of you and to the community. So that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and now we'll have some board comments and correspondence. I'll start with Ms. Capps. Is my right? Thank you. I just wanted to reflect on some correspondence I've had in the last few days since school started. Think, think people are so happy and excited. You can tell um, that things are off to a good start. Uh, two areas. Number one is with the off in the way um, technology um, policy, which is students not having their their phones on in, in their hands in class. And I've heard from a handful of parents about how relieved they are with that, um, with that policy. And I also understand uh, from Joyce that teachers have already noticed a difference, even though we're only on day three. So it seems like that is a very uh, welcome, perhaps overdue uh, policy. So congrats to this team and for all of the teachers who are implementing it, which is the hard part. Um, and I just wanted to also thank the superintendent and the team and all of the people who participated in the um, the staff kickoff at San Marcos. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there, but I just heard, again, really positive things. Uh, uh, the students who participated, and Dr. Maldonado, you really do have, have shown us how important it is to always keep the students front and center, even in our celebrations, right? And even when we gather, even more so then. So thank you for that and for all of the... Um, effort that went into getting our school year off on a good, good foot. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Simmons. I enjoy listening to your report, and um, I look forward to listening to San Marcos and those Pueblos <laughs> to their report as well. So thank you. And uh, a big thank you to all the teachers, all the staff that makes possible for the schools to be open. Uh, like Ms. Capps mentioned, we've been getting a, emails and messages about the, is it off in a way, apagado y guardado, uh, the cell phones. So it's, um, I'm hoping that'll be, the policy will come soon and um, it'll be implemented district wide and I guess secondary district. But the teachers are pretty happy, so thank you. I appreciate that. I know um, Ms. Edison is leading that, so thank you so much for doing that. Also, yesterday I had the great pleasure of attending the DLAC uh, meeting uh, here at the district office. It's a group of parents who are very dedicated, very motivated in improving the educational experience of their students. So I want to big a big shout out to all those parents that came and encourage more parents to be part of that. So thank you, and here's looking forward to a great school year. Great, thank you. Um, and so I'll just conclude, I echo the 
the comments of my sister board members. I actually, it was such a fun day of that first day. It was a rally, and I had I was so pleased. The board members, Ms. Munoz and Ms. Ford, were there to invite us to be part of your space. You could just feel the difference. You could just feel the energy, and I had to do a little Bengay rubbing, you know. <laughs> But it was all good. It was all worth that. It was it was great and to have all the cheerleaders there and really in voice and really you really could feel and that uh, we are united was being embodied in, in, in that day. And and certainly, uh, Ms. Simmons, thank you for that presentation. You know, I'm going to take that, you know, okay, the, it's the rise of the duns. I'm going to incorporate it somewhere in terms of that, you know, as we out there, we're out there in the community talking about this district and we are rising as a district. You could see it and, and you know, we were surrounded by those beautiful orchids that everyone had a chance to do that but it just it was just a great feeling and, and and you can hear it coming back from teachers that have you know that have uh, sent emails to us even for the public have sent emails to us in terms of um, the, the policies and things that are going on and just the energy that their kids were bringing home we, we, that's good to see on the first day because usually like it's the first day of school but um, that was not the case and so just want to appreciate the students and the hard work that everybody's doing to make this district be exactly what it can be and, and certainly our students are able to, to thrive uh, in this environment and so that concludes my comments, but we'll now go to the student board member comments. Is she on? I'm not sure if she's here. Is Ms. Minos? Ms. Okay. So once I see Ms. Minos, I'll ask her for her comments. Okay. We'll go to you. Um, good evening, everyone. It's super nice to see you all here at the first meeting when I am formerly a junior. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to see everyone. And um, I have a few things to report out. So as Dr. Maldonado mentioned, and as the board members mentioned, we presented at the August 16th all district planning meeting. It was one of the most incredible experiences that I've had as a student in my very short um, experience in the education system. But I think you could really feel the energy, you could really feel the spirit, and you could really feel the optimism. And I think that was what stuck out to me. We were a team of four. Um, it was me, Isa Morales from DP, Emily Pineda from SB, and also Jamie from SB. And we were really able to connect with a lot of the teachers, even after we had our remarks. We had so many people coming up and telling us that they appreciated our words, that they felt inspired, that they felt motivated, and that they felt that they had, you know, something to work towards for the next year, which was awesome. I was getting teachers who I've never had teachers who I've never seen coming and telling me that, you know, my words made a difference in their life, which was awesome. And it really did demonstrate our mission to be unified this year. It did it, it did create that sense of unity, that sense of, of teamwork that I think has been missing for a really long time. And I think it's important that we appreciate our success and celebrate our success, but also recognize that we have a long way to go and that we can only do it if we work together. So that was definitely one of the most fun ways that I've started off a school year. And some other updates is that we are working on, on my end, ways to continue keeping students front and center. So for us, that looks like we are going to begin planning and meeting the Superintendent's Advisory Council. So this Advisory Council is a group of 20 to 25 students who advise the superintendent and the student board member on any issues and concerns that they have regarding school, the way that the district is operating, anything at all. And it's just the way for, for students to feel that they have a say and for students to really feel like the stakeholders that they are. And we're also planning a meeting with all of the school ASB presidents, and ASBs are the Associated Student Bodies, so we want to make sure that we have clear communication on what we want school culture to look like this year, and what we are, are identifying as issues in our schools that need to be addressed immediately, because each school is different, even though we're one district. And as students, it's really important that we ourselves identify goals that we think we can work towards, because we want to make sure that our community is one that reflects our goals, our values, and our ideals. And we are hoping to meet with junior high elementary schools this year and introduce civic engagement earlier on to make sure that more students are looking forward to getting involved in high school, whether it be through this position as student board member or ASB, clubs, pathways, any means for them to get involved in their community. And just today, actually, um, I, along with Isa, met with Dr. Becchio regarding the calendar for the 23-24 year, and I mentioned that because I've never been asked 
what I think of a school calendar, even though I'm attending school and I'm attending, you know, all of the days required by law. So I think it was it was a brilliant, brilliant offer by Dr. Becchio, and I just want to express my gratitude for that and express how much it means to me that someone was like, hey, you're going to school. What do you think about starting on this day? And what do you think about getting this, you know, day off? And mm -hmm. it means a lot to me. And I and I hope that, you know, as, as cabinet, you are able to imagine how you all can include students as much as possible in the work that you do, because sometimes it is a blind spot for adults. Um, and I also want to just acknowledge that school has started and, you know, despite the chaos, it's incredible to see all the joy and connection on campus and on all of the other campuses as I'm hearing. And I just want to note that with the start of school, there comes a lot of anxiety um, for students and for adults and for families. So I want to offer that there are resources for everybody. Please reach out if you need help. Please reach out if you are feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or you need any support at all. And, you know, you have to continue leaning on community because that's what we're really here for. So I encourage everyone in this room and everyone watching to find ways to practice self-care every day. I'm not going to go on and on about this. I could talk for hours. But, you know, continue taking care of yourself because that's how you can take care of your community. Continue prioritizing yourself and continue prioritizing our kids because we all need a little support now and then. And that concludes my comments. Yes, thank you, Ms. Kavia, for that very detailed and energetic report. Um, no, I mean that in the best way. I was at a, I was at a meeting, and, and a community member for the first time that I had been in had asked, what can we do for our kids? And so you just eloquently stated that in terms of what the community can do is keeping our kids on the forefront of our thoughts or including them in our work in our various areas. So there, the community is out there looking and hearing. So thank you very much for that report. Um, so next we'll move to um, public comments uh, for non-agenda matters within the we have a virtual ones. They're virtuals. Okay, Ms. Caps, you have those. We just uh, uh, let's see. We just have four. Uh, or let's see, one D nine. D nine. We just have one uh, yeah. virtual. Yeah. Oh, I call yeah. the name. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I'm happy to call Miss uh, Jennifer Williams to speak virtually on public comment. Good evening. Um, this is Sandra, and just to let you know, Ms. Williams is not online. Okay. Okay. If she joins during public comment, we can add her. So then we'll move to in person. Is that correct? Uh, do we have any? We don't have any public comments here in person. So okay. We're, we're good. There we go. Okay. All right. Then that brings us to the consent agenda. Um, are there any public comments for the consent agenda, which would be E, Ms. Caps? Do we have any E's uh, for that? And, and do we have any public comments here for, okay, and Ms. Superintendent. Board members, I'd like to call your attention to an item that was set on your desk. Item uh, under the consent agenda, item E22, there is a change to the cost. Uh, the invoice did not include pool use and lifeguard. So the cost will now increase from 34,155 to 36,535. Um, and that's on there for your reference if you have any questions when you go through the consent agenda. Thank you. So board members, are there any items you'd like to see pulled for further discussion? Ms. Alvarez? I'd like to pull number eight, please. Okay. Number eight. Any others? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and just open, pull that okay. and discuss. Thank you. You can go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I like for the audit to reflect any district findings and the district's response to that finding. Uh, the district, not, not that the auditors is going to write the response, the corrective action, the mm -hmm. auditors don't write that. The district writes that response and that's included in the audit. So that in the following year's audit, it shows that the prior year there was a finding and the correction that was done. Um, I remember when I first joined the board, there were a couple of findings, and I made this request, and I think I wasn't clear in my request because the auditors were saying, well, we don't do that. Uh, I wasn't asking that they write their response. I'm asking that the district's response be included. And I think that shows great transparency. It also shows the board that whatever finding was, it was taken care of. 
So uh, prior to approving this contract, I would like to see that change made. Okay. So, Ms. Hernandez, do you have any? You, okay. Uh, yes, we have received your communication and, and your questions about that. What I'd like to propose uh, for the board is to bring that request to the audit committee and have it discussed at the audit committee before we we go ahead and make that change. I think Thank that would be the appropriate channel for us to handle that. Sure, sounds good. And let me know because I'm part of the audit committee. So. Yeah, the so audit committee is sitting right here. That's, That's what I was going to suggest too. So the but audit committee you. right now is my understanding it's you and Ms. Ford. So no, it's me. So. <laughs> Think okay. I think we changed. Okay, that's the fine. So, so can we bring that item to mm -hmm. the audit yes. committee and have that decision made there before? Yes. We, okay. okay. Thank you. So with that being said, you're okay with approving the contract tonight with that uh, I, added? I you, would like to, I, I want to make sure that happens. I personally would like to approve it once I know. And if the audit committee recommends something different, then that is fine. But I'd like to have the opportunity to bring that to the committee. So are you asking for that item to be approved? I'm asking, I'm asking if, if it's necessary for the audit committee to weigh in, yes, this, yes, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, may yeah. I just respond sure. that um, in our conversations with the company that does the work, I think I, if I understand you correctly, the request is that the staff add it. So for the purposes of this contract, we wouldn't make the change to the contract, we would make a change to the procedures, which includes the staff work. Yeah. So. My recommendation to the board, and it's up to you to decide, is to approve the contract, but then to bring through the audit committee what actions you want the staff to take, which would then become part of our actions next. Uh, I would like for the auditors to request that from the district. So, and that's not going to cost any additional money. It's not going to cost additional work. What I'm asking is for the auditor to say, okay, there's a finding in this process. What I'd like for you to do um, Dr. Maldonado is to uh, provide me with your corrective action so I can put it as part of my report. So I, I think, so let me just understand, so I think that, so tonight we're asking to approve the contract. You're not saying we don't want to approve the contract. You want to add that procedure. So I think we can approve the contract and then as the audit committee we can add that as part of the procedure. Does, does that If the satisfy? committee agrees to that. I think well, that's you and I here in yeah. the city, so I think yeah. we're pretty there. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, formally yes. we'll do it, but I think we can just move past this yeah. one and, and approve the contract tonight and then talk as an audit committee to add mm -hmm. that procedure. Is that, um, is that, um, is it, I'm agreeing with that. With that. Okay. Sure. Great. Um, and so, with that, are there any additional items that we need to pull or discuss? We're good. Okay. And also, so we'll uh, move approval for. Um, of the consent agenda with the correction on E22 of the increase um, to include the other charges that need to be there. So do I hear a motion? I don't see Ms. Minos. Is she on? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So can I have a motion to approve the, with the corrections, the consent agenda? I move to approve with the corrections. Okay. Ms. I second. second to approve with the corrections. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All aye. right. Motion approved. Consent agenda, Bruce. Thank you for that discussion. And we're moving right along here. It's almost a little nervous, but uh, anyway, <laughs> like something, something's gonna fall somewhere. But anyway, so next, uh, yeah, we'll have um, an action agenda. We're going moving to the action agenda, and we will have Miss um, Miss Caps. You have the yes. We have public comment on F10 and F11. So starting so with we can start with F10. Um, that would be Roseanne Crawford. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, You're going to go by we, item? We, yes. Uh, we're yes. Item. So none on F1. So we'll no not on F1. Do you have any person. No person. Okay. So, all right. Who's making the present? Is that business services? That's you. Good evening, board members, and just ignore my fancy glasses. <laughs> I had an eye appointment right before this, and I'm still fully dilated, so I can barely see you, but we'll try to get by. Um, okay, so uh, hopefully we'll have uh, my presentation pop up. Yeah. 
There we go. Okay. So we are back to talk about the selling of bonds. So if you remember, um, uh, just uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So on July, 20, uh, July 19th, we had a bond presentation. We talked about some of the great things that we're doing out there with the bond money. Um, and we had the, you approve the tax levy resolutions. And so this is kind of the next step now to go forward to the, for the issuance of the bonds. So um, the, the process to sell the remaining geo bonds so that we have enough money to finish our uh, wonderful projects that we're working on. And um, online with us tonight, we have some amazing experts that can help us answer any questions that you might have. I can barely see you guys, but <laughs> it looks like we have uh, Danielle Aruda online from KNN, and we have uh, David K uh, Kasanoka, and I think we might be missing one or two other people, but that's fine. Um, so we will go ahead and move on. Next slide, please. So this is where we are in the schedule um, for the selling of the issuance of the bonds. So, um, you know, last time we talked, we um, had you uh, approve the tax levy resolution. Tonight, we've got some um, several documents that you all have seen that were attached there um, that legal and disclosing documents for you to take a look at. And then um, as we and some resolutions for you to sign for us to go forward to sell the bonds. And then you can kind of see the schedule there of, of what happens next. And then finally, we get to the closing on October 17th, um, at which time we would then receive the money once we sell those the, the bonds. So let's, let's take a look again of, of the bonds that we're talking about. Next slide, please. So um, we have the two measures, the measure um, I and the measure J. And so we are selling the, the next and final series for each of them, um, which is your series C bonds. So for the, um, the measure I, which is mostly the secondary um, school sites, we have um, $35 million left to sell, and that's what we're, we're working on selling uh, tonight. And then the SFID number one is also a Series C, and it's the remaining on that one as well, and so that's $18 million. So all told, $53 million. Um, and next slide, please. So the steps that are going to um, occur in order to, to get this done is we have the two resolutions, the district-wide bonds measure I, that's the secondary one, and the other resolution that's the SFID number one, which is the measure J. So you'll have those two that you'll be um, voting on tonight. We have a preliminary official statement. Um, you probably have seen these before. Um, and you will have noticed there are some holes in it. There, it's not completely filled out because as you go through the selling of the bonds, there will be some items that will be filled in once we have the data for it. We have a bond purchase agreement. And then the, finally, the disclosure um, certificate. And that's then all done. Um, so it's very, very exciting. And it's wonderful that we're kind of wrapping up this this stage of the bond sales and that we can just continue working on the great projects that we're doing. Next slide, please. And I think that's it, but we have, if you have any questions on any of it, our experts are here to help answer those questions. Okay. Would members have any questions or comments? Yeah, I think this is very exciting. And <laughs> I was going to make a comment. You know, I thought you were wearing your sunglasses because our future is so bright, right? It's you so can't bright. See it. It's so bright. Yeah. It's that song. It is your <laughs> so no. it is your birthday today, I understand. It Happy is. birthday. Thank you. Yeah, Thank a little you. bird just whispered in my ear. So, <laughs> so congratulations. It's been, it's been an interesting day, for sure. <laughs> But thank you so much um, for that. So uh, I know Ms. Munoz is online now, so I'll be calling her as part of our, our, the rest of our meeting. So hearing no additional comments and or, um, or questions, can I have a motion to approve um, item F1? Uh, I, first of all, thank you so much to Ken Ann and to uh, Mr. Kachnoka. I'm very familiar with their work, and I know they do excellent work, so thank you. And thank you, Ms. Hernandez, for your work and your team, and I'm very happy to move that we approve of this item. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. 
Ms. Capps. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Ms. Munoz, I see you. Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. All right. Thank you. Okay, next we're moving to action item F2, approval of agreement of conceptual, uh, conceptual architectural services for Harding University Partnership School Community Resource Center. Is that Ms. Marina? Thank you. Good evening, board members, uh, President Munoz, uh, Executive Cabinet, members of the public. Um, uh, today I'm here to ask for your approval uh, for the conceptual architectural services uh, for the Hard Harding University Partnership Community Center. Um, just a bit of history. This partnership is um, 12 years old from you know the documents that I have. And uh, the partnership was between UCSB, um, the uh, Govert School of Education, Graduate School of Education, and Harding University uh, School. Uh, the partnership grew and developed into uh, a more uh, cohesive, uh, collaborative um, um, uh, friendship and also, you know, partnership that would allow us to um, serve the community beyond just the, just the education. The idea of having this community center is to provide additional services for specifically the West Side residents who have uh, either limited access due to their uh, either immigration status or their uh, poverty or, or any other you know, social uh, needs that they might have, health care need, uh, anything else or the language need that they might have. So this partnership, this, this particular building with the services within uh, would allow for, for people from the community uh, to come in and receive these services, not maybe not even directly, but through uh, the collaboration and to uh, uh, through our work with the uh, social services of the county and the city of Santa Barbara, and with the other organizations in the in the area, who are able to to help uh, the community here um, around the uh, around the school. So uh, the. But the item I want to present, that's just a little background as to what we're doing, you know, just to give you the big, big picture. Uh, the item on the agenda is actually for the architectural services just to begin the conceptual design. And I do have a, um, I do have a drawing. Um, our architect was supposed to be here, but that's okay. I think I'll do. <laughs> I have a drawing here that's the conceptual design for the, for the center. The drawing shows that we will have to do a few changes. We will leave the important part of the school, which is the walkway, uh, right there. You can see it in blue, and you can also see the, you know, the numbered items that we're planning for this center. And this is again just a concept that may change with time. It's just I asked our architect to to make sure that with the, with this just the text of what they're planning to do to present a picture so that we can visualize as to what what is being done here in the center. Um, so we'll have um, we'll have computers, we'll have volunteers, we'll have people who will be uh, you know receiving clients through a different entrance completely. So architecturally speaking, there will be some changes. From the street, there, there will be a different entrance. And there, uh, we're planning for uh, two parking spots, uh, one, of course, being ADA ac accessible parking spot. And we will also make sure that uh, the, the space has entrances from both the school side and from the outside, from, from, the, from the street side. Um, we have something similar at Frank Franklin Elementary School, and we all went there to visit and to you know to see how how it's built and you know what kind of services they provide. Uh, it, we were not building it exactly like they have because this building is actually larger, and uh, we visualize uh, uh, more accessibility for services for the community with this building. So what we have there, I can't see from there, but I can pull my own drawing here and tell you what we have. We have a um, we have restrooms, we have storage, we have demonstration kitchen. Demonstration kitchen is just a fancy name for a regular kitchen that you have in your house. 
and we have uh, what, what that means specifically is not to have uh, construct um, commercial or industrial hoods and grease traps it's just a kitchen so we call it the demonstration kitchen you can cook in it but you can't make large you know meals for for large number of people uh, we will have an office this is a private office where uh, people can get help uh, with consultants those consult consultants when I say consultants they include maybe legal aid maybe a psycho uh, psychologists uh, or a doctor, you know, there will be doctors who will be participating in this program. This is a very um, inclusive charity, but I hate to call it charity, really. It's, it's more of a, a service-providing organization to the community that is in much need. So, um, and people would love to have it because a lot of times they, they don't even know that they have this uh, resource to come and ask for help. Uh, we love the we love the concept that our architect created. Actually, he's right here. <laughs> yeah, we, we we love the concept that we created. But of course, you know, when you work with partnership with a university, and uh, usually concepts change, and I Im imagine this one will as well. Uh, but I think it's a very good start. Um, so if you have any questions about the drawing or any kind of services that our architect KBZ, Joe Wilcox, is here, uh, he can answer the questions. Um, otherwise, I would just ask you to approve this item. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we just were a little ahead of our schedule, so you're right on time. So you're great. <laughs> um, so I will, Ms. Munoz, going to you, would you have any comments or questions on this item? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you, Ms. sims -Moten board members in the room, any questions or comments? Just Ms. Uh, not about the actual construction and facilities, it looks wonderful, but um, I just would love to kind of hear more about the, the West Side Partnership and sort of what the, the, the dreams are, because I remember, I, thanks to your memo, that this was 2020, which seems like forever ago, that the board uh, passed the 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 existence of this, but I'd love to just hear kind of more about it at some future date. Okay. I'm not yeah, putting no. that on you because I, I understand that you're here to present on the facilities, but mm -hmm. it piques my interest because it's such an important partnership and, and the connection between UCSB and Harding is so valuable, but also the West Side Consortium. I, I was involved in a couple conversations related to that with Bauer Foundation, et cetera. I just kind of, would, I'm just curious in a good way uh, about what's happening. It's evolving, I can say that much. That From great. my short, short uh, tenure here, I can see it evolving and in a good direction. So, and I can't uh, at this point comment on it, but I will keep that in mind. And in the future, we'll present specifically about the partnership. Sure, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, I think if I understand, the question is like, what's been, what's been happening since and where we are? I think we've been waiting for this part to really come to fruition. Um, and next steps, if the board approves this tonight, is to actually now begin to see once the building is completed, what are we gonna, who we're gonna include in all those That's spaces. Wonderful. And what, what's the time frame? I, did you indicate it? Um, Steve, Steve Vince may be able to, to provide that answer about the time frame. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, just, uh, it's, a rough time frame of the completion of the project. Uh, I do not, because what we need to do first get the drawings. I see. Created so too, too soon. So yep. we're working with Jeff at uh, at the university, and then he's also going to do the fundraising in order to create the construction. I see. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Sure, Ms. Tellers. In the report, it says that Harding Principal Veronica Brinkley ha Binkley has been um, involved in the process. Yes. So uh, maybe this is more of a question for the architect. Can you give me a little bit of more insight of how the principal has been part of this uh, process? And I would imagine she's going to continue being closely involved in this. Yeah, Joe Wilcox with KBZ. Um, we worked with Veronica a lot on lots of projects. They gave us a program that they worked out with university people, kind of a, a written program what they'd like to see. And she has seen this diagram, and that's where we're at. We've been working in a vacuum. If this contract gets approved, then we'll sit down, roll up our sleeves, have all the meetings, do 3D renderings, help them with fundraising. So, 
Thank you. So um, what we did with uh, Jeff and uh, with Veronica and our, our folks who were working on this uh, process, we actually did visitations to figure out what we truly wanted. Because we didn't want to go to Joe and his team and say, can you create something? We wanted to really give them a vision so we can limit uh, the, any change orders or anything like that so we can actually communicate exactly what we wanted. So that's how we went through that process. So. Okay, here no additional comments. May I have a motion to approve F2? So moved. Caps, do I have a second? Second. Okay, Ms. Alvarez. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. We move to F3, hearing no public comments. Nope. Okay, move to F3. And Miss, uh, is it Sita from? Yeah, yeah. or oh, at F3, right? Right, so if we have any questions, I know she's here, be here to add to those questions with regards to the denial of the, uh, the bid protest. I think you need to turn your mic up, yeah. We have two items that are related to a Cleveland project. Yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, we had a bid conference as usual, and we had several bidders. Uh, so there were two protests to, to the lowest bid. Well, the, uh, the, there was one a bidder that protested two, two lowest bids. So our uh, legal consultant has reviewed all the uh, back and forth and all the information about what the protest was about. It was mostly about, uh, my understanding, a subcontractor uh, uh, who was supposedly not licensed, uh, but it turned out to be that they were. CETA will be able to shed more, more light on that issue. Uh, so we denied the protest based on the, um, based on the advice of our legal services. Um, and CETA is here to answer more questions if you have any. Yeah, I think what, um, thank you for that. I think what the confusion was just because it was like denying the bid pros and we're awarding. So why those two yeah. weren't separate? So yeah. if you can just it, it's, it's, it that. is confusing because it, it doesn't read very simply, you know, right. where you can, you know, it, it's two components. So basically we have, we awarded to the, the uh, contract, to want to award the contract to Menemship, but because of the, because of the protests, we had to, um, you know, package it in, in a certain way that would address both issues. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, uh, inspection services, which, which is the next item also on the action agenda, which is connected to this project. Uh, yeah. And that was also pulled out of the consent agenda because it's, it, it's, it's connected to the project. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering when I was pulling that because it was just confusing and now we understand yeah, exactly. that in order to go forth you have to do one first and they need, they need to be together because they they're do. the same project. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I guess my only question uh, was that, so we award the contract, who are we awarding the contract to? To Menemsha. Menemsha, that's okay, that was my thing. Okay. All right, any other questions? Uh, Ms. Munoz, do you have any questions on this item? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, hearing none. Okay, so I need a, move, a motion to approve this um, action. I move to approve uh, denial of the bid protest by Newton Construction and Management and to award the contract for Cleveland Elementary School new classrooms to Manemsha per the bid documents presented. Okay. I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye, please. Aye. 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 So again, she's explained that. Any additional questions or comments on um, F4? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? I move that we approve uh, the proposal for DSA architect inspection for Cleveland Elementary School. And I believe, was that for the leash construction or who was that for? Um, yes, uh, yeah. proposal for DSA inspection. I move that we approve that. Okay. And I second the motion. Okay, have a first and a second. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Great. Okay, motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll move next to item F5, hearing no public comments on that one. Okay, we'll. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Superintendent Maldonado. 
uh, this item, I'd just like to take a f uh, just a couple of minutes to explain a little bit about this item. It also gives me an opportunity to tell you about occupational therapists, who we don't hear a lot about, actually, in our school district. Uh, we do have four occupational therapists that work for us. They address the needs of students who have uh, fine motor skill needs, um, sensory needs, adaptive um, adaptive technology needs, um, and so they're just a really vital, vital part of our uh, special education program and serving students with IEPs and their IEP goals. Um, this group actually submitted through the formal process of reclassification, and they're classified employees. Uh, their, their actual um, reclassification proposal was considered. It actually was denied. Um, we did a study on the salary and we felt like there, there was not justification for what they were asking for a salary increase. But um, on appeal, we heard their appeal case and actually there was a very, very compelling case for adding the four additional days to their, to their contract. Um, rather than um, paying them uh, you know, an additional day here, an additional day there for the planning and preparation that's needed, um, we, we did feel like it was justified to add four additional days. What this does is it allows these employees to begin work when teachers begin work, and they have a work day after the school year when teachers have a work day. Um, the three before school starts are really vital because they, they actually can get to know the IEPs they, if there are IEPs held, they can actually attend them. Uh, they can prepare for knowing who the students are and what they'll need in the classrooms and even communicating with teachers. So this was, for us, a really important um, thing to grant on their appeal case. And so that is the background on what you have before you um, tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions. And I do want to just publicly thank our occupational therapists for the important work that they do. Board members, any questions or comments? Okay, so Ms. Minos. Yes, um, I just want to say I approve. I um, I appreciate the thorough explanation, Dr. Becchio. Um, that really helps me also understand this item. Um, no further questions. Okay, here no further questions or comments. Move, a motion to move approval of item F five. I move. Uh, the F5, the approval of school occupational therapist work calendar. Second. Ms. Alvarez. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Becco. All right. Um, next is F6. Secondary. Okay. Ms. Ms. Sheffield's coming up. Dr. Sheffield's coming up. No public comments on this item. Can you hear me now? There we go. Well, good evening, board president, um, board members, extended cabinet. I'm here to uh, discuss the updated board policy as it, in regards to the independent study. In uh, the 2021-2022 school year, there was a change because of the COVID restrictions. We were mandated to provide an opportunity for all students to participate in independent study. Uh, with the new board policy, now it is an optional opportunity for students to participate in and for districts to offer the opportunity to participate in independent study. So that is uh, one of the biggest changes. One thing that we have recognized is the number of students in our elementary programs has uh, extremely decreased. So we will be offering the opportunity for independent study for grades 7 through 12. So the change, the biggest change would be the uh, optional independent study program. Are there any additional questions that I might ask? Right now we're just asking you for a first read and then we can come back for the final approval. But your action it's an action oh it needs to be approved tonight all okay. right all right um so uh, board members any questions or comments or miss alvarez uh, do we how many students do we have right now in independent study do we? in our grades seventh and eighth there are about 10 uh in the upper grades and I'm taking a strong guess at it right That's now. Okay. Um, maybe about 25. So it's a small number. It's a small number. And does this impact 
for example, students that travel more than five or ten days, does this impact the ability to do independent study when they're traveling? If they have the opportunity to have access to a computer, there is an obligation to make sure there is synchronous time. So if they have Zoom, they can participate via Zoom in that synchronous time, depending upon the grade level. So if a student is at a certain school and they're going to be gone for 15 days, then they sign up for the Zoom instruction? They're not necessarily in the same school? or So when you're, when you're 1 to 15 days, is short-term independent study. As I discuss the independent study and what we're looking at right now, that's discussing the long-term independent study. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Additional comments or questions? Ms. Minos, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you for that great presentation, and thank we're you. actually approving this tonight for action. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, so hearing that, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. I need a second. No, I didn't know. I was giving Ms. Munoz an opportunity, but I yeah. will second it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Here an approval in a second. Uh, all, of, all in favor, raise a hand and say aye. 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 Right. Thank motion passes. Thank you for that presentation. So move into item F7. Uh, any uh, public comment? I don't hear that. Nope. Okay. Any comments or questions, board members? We're good. Ms. Caps, you'll call the motion. Yes. So I move to approve the board action on student discipline, education code 48918, case number 202122-34. Uh, I second. Right. I, I just want a clarification. Is that the one that was pulled? Uh, no, it's the, the next one. one? Okay. Yes, oh, the next one. Yes, the next one. Got that. Okay. Thank you. That was my hesitation. There we go. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> yeah, so Ms. Caps and then uh, Ms. Nunes, you second it. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Yes. And as we were discussing here, action uh, on F is eight. We're pulling that for a later, coming to the board at a later time. So we're pulling it for tonight. So we're moving on to F9. Any um, no, public no, comments? Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. In virtual. Too. No virtual co public comments. Okay. So they're in the room. Okay. Fabia, can you pass this down? Okay, great. We'll have the presentation first and then public comment. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Superintendent. Um, so we're bringing the MOU um, back in October 2021. The board directed that the district go back and reimagine what school safety was. Um, there has been some collaborative meetings that have happened in the meantime between the city of Goleta, the sheriff's department, and us kind of redefining what the role of the campus security, the original title was CRD, I'm sorry, um, SRD, the sheriff resource deputy. As part of this process, we've reimagined even the title for that role, um, really calling out what we want the work to be, which is CRD now, which is community resource uh, deputy. Um, initially, the ask was for San Marcos and um, Dos Pueblos to be part of this MOU process, but because of municipality and locality, um, we are moving forward today with Dos Pueblos as a first step. San Marcos is located in unincorporated area, so we're going to have to bring that back. There's conversations ongoing about um, continuing the conversation about an MOU to cover that space. Um, the highlights of the MOU that's before you tonight, it just clearly um, defines the roles of one, the C CRD, and us as administrators and, and ensuring safety on our school campuses. And really want to highlight that when we say safety, we mean physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially safe campuses. Um, it is clear that uh, the CRD will do check-ins with the principal or their designee, patrol around the school. School and any places where students congregate outside the school. That check-in isn't clearly defined in the MOU. It is up for the principals to, uh, to communicate what works best for them as a check-in, whether that's to stop in in the morning, a phone call, a text message. Um, it really outlines that the work is that we have safe and secure communities as well as school campuses for our staff and families and students, that we the, our partnership really is their expertise helping us preserve life and property 
disposal of confiscated items that we may not have um, access to dispose of, and trying to build positive relationships. We've had several opportunities to confer and talk about um, what will be included in this. We were clear that anything that qualifies for a diversion in the community, those are violations that law enforcement come across students with, that they would be referred to team peer court. We're on our campuses, we're gonna handle those. We won't go through a diversion because we also offer supports and services for students. Um, we've had some community conversations. I myself have had a conversation with um, Stand Up for Racial Justice Santa Barbara, and I believe they are here tonight um, and really went over the MOU, answered questions, really highlighting that we have prioritized the response to student behaviors as ours to have as administrators and school staff that we will not lean on or defer to law enforcement to deal with our student behaviors. We've had a conversation with law enforcement as well and they don't want any parts of that either. The MOU is clear that uh, we won't defer to them and they won't interject into student behavior issues. Um, we understand Stand depending on where we were trained. It's either a behavior or a crime, and we want to make sure that we have the appropriate response for student behaviors. And that is the MOU that is before you in summary. Thank you. So, board members, comments, questions? Well, I think public comment. Oh, you do have public comments. Yes. I apologize. No, Sorry. all good. Okay. Um, Ms. Simpson, we have two public comment. We have Kim Paskage first and Barbara Permit. Hello, board members and uh, board president. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Shakinya Edison for uh, bringing forward this community policing MOU position for DP and Goleta Valley um, that reimagines safety as the board directed back in October of 2021. Uh, the Youth Coalition Cops Off Campus Santa Barbara uh, collected and brought forward numerous student testimonies that supported the national data and research that found that police on campus do not actually keep students safer, uh, but instead lead to criminalization and school to prison pipeline for especially students of color, students with disabilities, and LGBTQAI plus students as well. This MOU finds the middle ground by giving the school principals a channel of communication in case there is an emergency on campus, but keeps armed officers stationed off campus. The Ed Code notes in the MOU outlines that the very few reasons why a police officer would need to enter campus. Instead, the model leans on campus security personnel who have established relationships with students on campus and mental health district resources as the first line of support uh, for on-campus events that occur. I recognize that there was a lot of work put into negotiating this communi community officer position between the school district, uh, the city of Goleta, and the sheriff's office, and I hope that the board will vote unanimously again to support this follow-up to their directive to find alternatives and reimagine safety for all of our high schools. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, Barbara Permit. Thank you, board, for this. Op Am I on? You are. OK. You're good. Thank you, board, for this opportunity to speak. My name is Barbara Parmet, and I've been in support of the unanimous decision by this board in October 2021 to find the best ways to keep district students out of the school to prison pipeline by keeping cops off campus. The many testimonies from students of color as well as students with disabilities and those identifying as LGBTQA plus gave strong evidence of the harm caused by the presence of armed officers in their classrooms and on campus when there is no reason for them to be there according to the education code. I appreciate the serious negotiations between the school district, the sheriff's office, and the city of Goleta. This MOU clarifies the reasons for calling an officer onto campus. I also appreciate how the district has brought in more mental health professionals and other support personnel to be part of the response team for disciplinary measures. We must train our teachers, staff, and administrators well in the rules of the education code so they act appropriately for all events on campus. 
I hope the board supports this MOU as a way to reimagine safety for, for our students who are our children and our future. Thank you. Thank you to our speakers. Thanks for being here tonight. That concludes public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members now questions and, and comments. Also. Okay, uh, can I start with Ms. Munoz? Because I don't want to forget her while she's there. Ms. Munoz. Uh, thank you, um, Ms. Sims Moten. I certainly, I've appreciated the collaboration on this um, MOU, certainly from the role of the superintendent and Ms. Edison, Ms. Kenya Edison, and also you, Ms. Sims Moten and Ms. Alvarez in terms of attending the meetings, working with the city of Goleta and with the sheriff's department. I think it strikes the balance that we were being asked for and hoping for so that law enforcement is on campuses when they're needed and for the safety of our students. Um, but so that it's also, you know, keeps in mind the mental health issues that we have talked about previously. So thank you to all involved. I really appreciated it. Ms. Kipps. I actually was hoping to hear from our student board member first before comments. Okay, I, I guess how, we're taking it out of order what I asked. So uh, I, I would, I would, I've been wanting to hear from you on this because I know how much you care and how much energy you put into this issue. Thank you. So first of all, thank you, Ms. Edison, so much for all the work that you've done, you know, tirelessly to make sure that what students worked for, for for years really came to fruition here. And I think, you know, I do want to acknowledge that it takes a village to make something like this work, um, you know, and carry forward a movement that was started by kids. So I really appreciate that. And I just want to mention that, you know, we're taking strides in the right direction. I think it's, it's time that we, we remember that students are not the threat, that we are not we, we can keep each other safe we can be in a community and we can be a family and we are not threats to one another and the threats that do exist to our safety need to be mitigated with appropriate measures and i think it's time that we recognize signs of mental health crises as signs of mental health crises and like you said as as, as behavior and not crimes and i would hope that the adults in the education system I'm so so intricately involved with are equipped to handle moments where my behavior might not be up to par. I would hope that the adults know how to talk to me when I'm having a bad day and, and don't have to resort to calling law enforcement on campus, which could lead to serious escalation and, and, and profiling of many students on campus. So I think this is absolutely a step in the right direction. I think making sure that law enforcement is protecting our schools from threats to our schools is going to be key and also creating a sense of family and a sense of accountability and obligation in our schools. I think all the adults should feel like, you know, kids in our schools are their own kids, that that issues in their school are issues that, that are affecting their family and it's not something that they can, like you said, defer to other people to figure out. And I'm, I'm really optimistic that this is going to be a step in the right direction, especially because of how many students so enthusiastically supported the decision back in October and how many students from DP, you know, were willing to share their trauma and be vulnerable without any compensation. I think I want to recognize all those who share their testimonies with us. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate you. It takes a lot. To, to be honest and be transparent about experiences of trauma. And I want to you know, thank you, thank the community here. I've worked very closely with Kim, Cressida, and Barbara, and I'm really thankful for, for the family I've built with them. And I want to thank Dr. Maldonado for the endless work that you've done, all the meetings, all the calls, all the you know, messages and emails and the, the tireless work. And you know, I really, I really am very grateful for everything that you've done. And I want to thank the board so much and you know I could never end with this but I just want to say I want to thank everybody and I think we are making steps in the right direction and I hope that with this decision comes greater sense of accountability responsibility and obligation from adults to take care of the kids and to take care of the school and to remember that we are not criminals we are kids and kids mess up once in a while and kids need someone to rely on and someone to confide in not someone to tell them that they are threats to society. So thank you very much.
Miss Caps, are you ready now? I'm ready. Okay. Because I will share that up. Well, I just want her to bring it home because I knew she would. But you go ahead, girl. <laughs> okay, good. <okay. laughs> No, but it's important because really um, I share that optimism now having heard from Serge and hear from you, Kavya, because it really was, if we go back, flashback to uh, October of last year, that the students mobilized and, and organized in a way that I hadn't seen since ethnic studies, just making such compelling arguments and sharing and sharing their vulnerability, as you've mentioned, and really, um, really impacted this board and uh, on an extremely challenging issue of trying to get the right balance. And I'm proud of this board for having um, taken the, the, having the wisdom to say, let's, let's step back, let's explore, because here clearly a compromise has been made. If you're working with the Sheriff's Department and you're working with the city of Goleta and you're working with law enforcement, and you're working with those who, who want um, want more police presence on in schools, and you have to see you have to see the good intentions on side on both sides. I mean, there are um, this is tricky. Uvalde hadn't happened when we started this, and now we have um, such urgency to make sure we do everything we can to keep our schools safe. But yet we know that we heard firsthand what an armed officer does to our students. So we need to try to find a balance and that's not just a static achievement. That means continually trying to achieve that balance, you know, every day that, that these adults are charged with these responsibilities. And I'm really pleased that because the students brought this forward, it allowed the opportunity for some conversations that hadn't happened previously to really outline an MOU uh, with our previous arrangements that hadn't been done. And so now it's in writing, the meetings have happened, and I share the optimism. Um, and I would just want to pick up again, last point on Kavya's point about the, the, the grown-ups, their responsibilities. And I'll wear my mom's demand action hat and say, that most school shootings, the vast majority are, are the guns were obtained from grown-ups, either are not locked in their house or bought for the children. So there's a lot of responsibility for grown-ups to be aware of mental health challenges, keep those guns locked if you are a gun owner, and just be as forward-thinking as we can so that our students can have not feel at all any kind of lack of safety themselves. Their, their, who, their identity needs to be held in sacred, sacred arms here by the caring adults that are around them. So thanks for this compromise. I'm happy to support it. And I'm so relieved that this is the outcome. Thank you. Ms. Alvarez. Thank you. First of all, thank you for the board report. Thank you for the narrative. It, it's really helpful to have this. It really decreases the number of questions, so I really appreciate your doing that. And it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good day to have this in front of us. It's, uh, we started this, uh, <laughs> Ms. Sims Moten, back in October, I believe. And uh, a huge, a huge thank you. It was such a pleasure to work with you, Ms. Sims Moten. Together, we had a number of meetings. We met with the sheriff. We met with his deputy, with his deputies. We met. Uh, we visited every single secondary school site. Uh, we met with the campus support, uh, campus safety assistance. It was a long, long process. And I'm happy that we have this uh, proposal in front of us. I want to say thank you also to the people that came before us and that set the foundation for us and a big acknowledgement for that work that was done so that we can be here today. And also the fact that we're a growing organization, that we're a learning organization. We didn't have an MOU before, but hey, we have one now. And look at everything that we have learned and how much better we're gonna be. So that's, that's in itself a celebration. And also a big thank you to the city of Goleta for being open to work with us. Uh, Ms. Sims Moten, I know you'll elaborate a little bit more on this. We participated on Zoom meetings and we learned about the beat and this and that and things that we didn't know before. So we look forward to continuing this uh, partnership with uh, Sheriff Bill Brown. A big thank you for, to him as well for being uh, flexible, for working with us. And um, I look forward to seeing what we're going to do at the other campuses at San Marcos. And um, thank you for your work. Uh, quick question on this. 
This is for the 20 to 23 school year, is that correct? You'll bring another one for the following school year, is that right? Yes, we want to learn from the year of mm -hmm. implementation and tweak and adjust where we may, where we need to at the end, and then we'll bring back in, back in the moment. Great, thank you. And I know the second part to this, I know Ms. Sims Moten will probably speak to this, but uh, we're also working to recognize our campus safety assistance, so that's coming up, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Thank you. And I just want to highlight that safe campus safety is everyone's responsibility. No one person will make that happen. So in our theme of hashtag we are unified, we're unified around student safety. Good and point. remember, it's safety. When we say it, we mean physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially safe. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you. I echo all the comments, um, student board member all the way around here. And I knew she's going to bring it home because she's very, she's all, she's been in very much in town. You know, it's like the, it's like a relay, you know, you start off and then you bring it home, right? So that was my concept, but I really appreciate all the, all the comments here and, and just the fact that we are at this point because we knew where we were in October and we were facing some opposition and, and just, un, you know, feeling like territorial things. It just, it felt like, oh, this is going to be a long way, but to get to this point, feels really good and it also says that when we come together and when we listen to you we can have this we can create a safe community not only you know for the community itself but also for the internal community with regards to our students because our students are in the community so we need to make sure that our community is safe for them and and acknowledge that they are part of the community and I know Miss Edison you have said many times is about the behavior us as adults understanding student behavior their students their kids their young and development where are they developmentally and how do we need to respond accordingly so I can appreciate how we're going to uh, increase our skills as adults to be able to respond appropriately where we're not you know, this is a kid that's having a bad day or a kid that has some developmentally they haven't gotten there yet in terms of you know their brains haven't developed fully yet so we're just recognizing that and so that the more that we are reimagining how we want to treat our students we really are setting to our we're preparing that world for that, that you know that, that doesn't exist but every time that we come together and, and and discuss and decide for the greater good that it's always for the folk for them uh, for the most part is for our students but as a community we have to support them because they're going to be in that community and how to do that I do want to appreciate um, the conversations um, that uh, Mr. Alvarez, Alvarez and I had with the Sheriff's Department, they weren't always friendly, and, but, but we needed all of that and, and the community, the, the, the members who are here that really were speaking very directly to us about what it was. And, I, and I'll tell you what was so important uh, in that conversation, what us being able to relay student conversation. They were in some conversations, but to be able to share that with those adults who were able to make that decision, we actually did change the minds because we were pretty stuck. There was some pretty stuckness. I'll just, I'll just say that. But I'm proud to say that we worked through it and all the work that you've done. And you've stepped in here in something that was already in place. So I appreciate that, that you're bringing in. And certainly, uh, Dr. Maldonado continued to work in, even through some of the, the just sometimes hard times. But we were able to work and get through that. And then I, and lastly, I would just say for our, our uh, campus safety assistance, how critical they are. And as we were visiting the campus, how critical. They're the ones with that relationship. And they were almost invisible in training and MOUs and what, what they needed to do. So I am I know we're going to bring that forward and honor them and, and acknowledge the work that they're doing and ongoing support that they need to be able to do. I know we started to make some of those, um, those asks come true with what they asked throughout the uh, time that we were visiting the school so I am very much in support of this very proud to have been part of you know getting us to this point we'll continue to work it's it's just it, as I think Ms. Capps said it's not static we got to continue to work forward on it uh, you know and this MOU is a result of um, the work that we've done together and sometimes the hard work that we've done together and then certainly the, I'm looking forward to the subsequent MOU that where we include St. Marcus is where we kind of started this so I want to make sure that we're going to make sure that that one's definitely in place and we follow up and I know that this is for one year and um, so if there are things that are changing mid-year will you bring back to say there may need to be adjustments throughout the year not wait to the end of the year should things come around let me, let me speak to that and add that um, this MOU, we are the first step of approval. Okay. Next, it will go to the City Council of the City of Goleta okay. and followed by the County for the Sheriff's Department approval. As okay. you know, this involved three, ent three government agencies, yes. three legal uh, teams mm -hmm. that have all vetted and approved it, uh, but now it's, it's going to those approvals. Once the three agencies approve, mm -hmm. they will start the, the timeline for that year long. Uh, and yes, if there's any uh, 
anything that happens in between, I don't expect that there are going to be any changes to the language as it stands Easy now. Right. But if it does happen, I'll bring it back to the board. Okay. We'll bring it back to the board. Yeah. Great. Any additional comments and or questions regarding this item? I think we're good. Therefore, I need a motion for approval. I move that we approve the MOU as presented. Okay. And I second the motion. Okay. A motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. And thank aye. you, Elder, for your work and your input. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just. So we'll move to um, F10. Do we F10. have any comments? First report. Yeah. I didn't know if we had any. But I think uh, we just not. have one comment at this point. Okay. okay. Mr. Vince. Uh, thank you. Good evening, uh, President Munoz, Vice President Sims Moten, board members, and Superintendent Maldonado. So I bring to you tonight, actually, the, you'll be making the decision on which process to take to fill the board seat vacancy that um, Trustee Caps will be uh, leaving once you transition to the Board of Supervisors. Last week I gave you the report, so there are three things. I gave you the report, and then the second thing I just want to bring up is just a reminder of what the order, what an ordering an election would mean. Specifically, that would be a spring special election. The second thing is that the amount or the cost is based upon 112,000 citizen uh, voting age population who would be participating. And the actual cost of the election based on the, the county office of elections, it's between seven hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars and that's for that would actually be paid for out of our budget. The second choice that you have is the provisional appointment. So and what that would mean is that once Trustee Caps submits her letter of resignation, we we would have 60 days to, to fill that appointment. So candidates can sub submit their applications. Uh, and then um, once you've selected the candidate going through that process, you have 30 days uh, for, or we'll, we'll have to wait for 30 days before uh, we can make it finalized. Because if there's a filing of a petition, uh, then, then we would have to go through that process. The last thing is I put on the report, I said there was a ten to $30,000 a budget or an impact. It actually is an estimate because really what was presented from you, which it would be uh, that having a candidate trained um, or providing some sort of training. So we haven't unpacked that yet. So that would mean that we, we could either contract that out, which would be this cost or we could actually do it in-house, which would mean that would be no cost. But I did want to just point out there was some sort of cost if we were going to include some sort of training. So that's what I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, and with that, uh, any questions or actually public comment? Do we have a public comment? Yeah, we have one public comment at this point. Um, I believe she's online, Ms. Moni DeWitt. Hi, Ms. Caps and board members. Yeah, I just wanted to say I um, I really support the idea of it not going to special election just due to the cost. I think we have a lot of unmet need in our community, and I think that the other route seems more prudent and fiscally responsible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. DeWitt. That concludes public comment. Okay, thank you. Board members, any comments or questions? Ms. Alvarez. I missed the last meeting where this was discussed, so if um, I'm a little behind catching up. I do have a, a question and a comment and also probably a statement on one, two, three, four, five, bullet number five. I, I'm a true believer in transparency and an open system. I would, I'm, my preference is that the board interviews every candidate that applies that meets the criteria, of course. Uh, the, the criteria set board for, is not set forward by the board, by, by the register of voters. What is the criteria? And that we interview every candidate that applies. I, I don't see why we would have two board members who would eliminate candidates from being interviewed. 
that doesn't sit right with me. It just doesn't feel that, to me, everybody should get a fair chance, just like when you're a candidate on the ballot, people have a chance to vote for whomever they, they decide. Uh, every person that applies, in my view, gets an interview. So that's, um, again, I wasn't here with the discussion. If you already discussed this, I'm on behind. But I want to make sure that my comments are, are taken into consideration. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Minos. Yes. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Alvarez and, and Ms. sims Moten. Um, the comment I have is, is an observation about bullet number four which I appreciate just from the equity standpoint is that, you know, candidate information forms are due to the superintendent office um, and can be received by email, fax, US mail or hand delivered. You know, some folks may not have access to email or fax and such. Um, so I appreciate that and certainly um, are, am in favor of, of having, um, of having candidates interviewed rather than going to an election. Okay, Ms. Gaps, do you have any? Okay, yeah, so um, thank you for that. So uh, to your um, question or and or comment, Ms. Alvarez, um, yeah, we hadn't made a decision as to what it's gonna be. So I appreciate um, your comment and also says that we may select, so it didn't mean that we will, but so it's there in terms of that. And so obviously through this discussion, we probably wanna uh, make sure it's fair, open and transparent and probably not do that. But again, that's the will of this board um, as we do that. I don't know we would need to make a change to that sentence, right? If we say may, we're okay. Okay. That's correct. So, and, and I'm sorry, uh, just to clarify as well. I mean, if you only have a handful of candidates, it's. Yeah. It, seems uh, pointless so that you yeah. could do exactly and so that's what you'll be guiding so it's just a suggestion that's what it yeah. is so noted we were actually went through an appointment process so we, we interviewed everybody um, and so my comment would be uh, I mean I'm in I'm, I'm in support of um, the provisional appointment um, selection so with regards to the cost I mean the cost of training it, it would cost us anywhere from 10 to 30 thousand I mean, that doesn't seem reasonable uh, it just Basically, I was I was looking at various contracts and just trying to find a ballpark because honestly, I haven't made any phone calls or did any more anything other than just giving that estimate of just considering all of our other contracts. And we might even consider doing a training not just for the provisional candidate, but also we could fold into the new candidate who would be the board member who would be elected you know, in November. So mm -hmm. there are various ways of looking at it. So I just, that's why that's there. Well, I appreciate that. And I, was, I would also say too, I think there's a greater cost if we don't get more trained as board members coming in. Right. Because the more informed we are, the better we are able to lead and understand ed code, our own board policy. So I think that's that's absolutely there. I think we can kind of look at the price and then use, use other options, what you're saying, that make it less. But I think if we don't do it, that's a far greater cost than even what's here. So thank you. Um, so any further comments? I'd like to elaborate on your comment. Okay. <laughs> I do agree it's a learning organization that we are. I think it's important that we set the example of we are learning, we also need trainings, and it's definitely something, like you said, uh, Ms. Sims Moten, it would be more costly not to do it. So it'd be good to continue discussing that as well. Ms. Kapia. And I think just reading the language, right, it says that the special board meeting held to interview the selected candidates will be conducted in public open session. And I think that's important to note that we're not losing that democratic piece, that people still have the opportunity to listen to their representatives or potential representatives, and they have the opportunity to, to engage with them and to see if they are truly the ones that they want representing them. So I think it's important to note that with either route, we're still maintaining democracy, which is a right that I think is so important to be protected. So hearing no additional comments to have a motion to approve, and we're choosing the provisional appointment. Do we need to say that specifically in the, in the motion? Yes, please. Okay. All right. I move that uh, we make a provisional appointment upon the resignation of uh, trustee caps and that all candidates that apply that meet the criteria are given an interview. Uh, I second. Okay. 
second by me. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Right. Thank you. I think, Mr. Vance, you need to stay up here, right? You're number 11. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, this evening you'll be um, reviewing and then voting on the edits for our, on our LCAP. Uh, so on July 28th, the county office contacted us stating that we needed to do some necessary edits on our LCAP before they can actually uh, approve it. Uh, our team, our Ed Services team, met with them face to face, which was great because we could also introduce them to our new leaders, which was nice. Uh, we met with them on August 3rd to review the changes. And so we actually completed everything on time and got it to the county office by August 15th. Some of the key revisions that we had to do was one in particular that's very important was that uh, we had to add a new goal this year. Um, based on uh, the new guidance coming from CDE, we had to address uh, the category of our students with disabilities because um, we had not met criteria starting in 2019. So what the state had requested specifically is to create a goal that's going to address that, that specific group of students. So as you could see, um, we worked with John Shetler and of course we, we received a lot of feedback earlier on within our parent group, especially with our DLAC group um, addressing the needs of our special ed students. So um, the thing that we really saw that, we, that would serve the greatest need with those students was just um, addressing, uh, increasing the percentage of those kids meeting the college and career ready and readiness requirement. With that being said, that we actually had to take some funding from another area to fold that into that goal. So what we ended up doing is we, we took it out of the, I believe it was the mental health contract, or it was the COM contract. And what we did was we just replaced that funding with um, with our uh, the federal funding, emergency funding, we had a choice either Title I or emergency funding. So we just decided to go ahead and use the emergency funding because that has a deadline to it as well. And then we took the funding to address this goal. Um, we took it out of the RL cap funding. So it's, it's aligned and balanced. Uh, in addition, we had to just add um, language to uh, areas where we had to discuss uh, budget from last year, expenditures, and our budget compared to expenditures. Uh, and then we had to um, update our action tables. I know that we also had to add language to um, the section that d addresses our improved services for the foster youth, our uh, emerging multilingual learners, as well as our low-income students. And with that, uh, open it up for public comment and um, and then questions. Do we have any public comments Thank you. on this one? Oh, I believe if Ms. DeWitt is still on, we have one public comment for F11. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so yes, board, I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk about this. I'm, I'm really concerned about um, the culture around our literacy, and in particular for the students with learning differences and our emerging multilingual students. And I think the way that the LCAP is uh, presented um, is missing just a tiny opportunity in making it more transparent, which is like uh, when I have my own business, I have a PL statement and you have to write who the payee is. It's a very specific thing and on this presentation we do have the amounts and we and uh, they have been lined up with the goals but it doesn't say how the money is spent and the reason why this is very important and particularly with the students with learning differences is because they need a different set of tools to learn language and i know this because i've lived it myself and i'm also very aware of uh this issue and the big thing is about decoding versus a queuing system. And um, I'm sure you are familiar with it, but um, also early testing and teacher training and reducing class sizes are the things they're doing in successful states like Mississippi. So um, 
two things. If we could make it more transparent so we can really see if the money is gonna go to things that will be effective for this group. And the other thing I would just like to say as a culture, I know we're sensitive to how we address certain groups and I've raised this many times. I know they might have to be referred to technically as students with disabilities, but I think it's a damaging way to reference a group of people who really just have a learning difference and frankly, if anything, it's our systems that haven't uh, been up to speed on how to accommodate them. So if we could consider that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. That, our that concludes public comment. Okay. Great, thank you. Questions or comments from the board members? Ms. Munoz? Uh, no comment at this time. Okay, thank you. In the boardroom, any questions or comments? Not for me. Ms. Capps, did you have a comment? Oh, no, no, oh. thanks. I just had one question. So, uh, Mr. Vance, you spoke that um, you were moving some dollars to adjust for this. So, how, from the uh, section that you moved dollars from, yes. how, how was it affected by, were the services decreased in order to do that? or No. Okay, so was it explained, like, what was happening there? Yeah, so it's basically we took some of our um, federal emergency funds and just replaced it. So it's just... It's just shifting the funds and filling in the, the gap, basically. Okay. But yeah. there's no service decreasing. Definitely in those not, areas. especially in that space, because we, we need every every service in that. Yeah, I think that's it, because we've, we've had comments about what money's been moved, but they're not really sure, understand. So I, that's where you see me asking, but I would ask that anyway, right. uh, as we're doing budgets, just to make sure that where we're moving money from, that it's not decreasing services at all. So you're saying that it's not. So. Not hearing any no additional comments and or questions, so I need a motion to approve. So moved. Need a second. I a second. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay, great. Motion's passed. Thank you, Mr. Vince. All right. That brings us to a closing to some degree. We obviously have no items that we need to return back. And coming events, any coming events that's coming? You want to announce some, Ms. Kavya? You want to go first? Go ahead. That's what I was going to say, too. Go ahead. Okay, well, starting this week, I think all of our schools are beginning their back-to-school nights, which is awesome. I'm excited to go to as many as I can and just meet all the students and see how excited everybody is for this school year, because I know I am. So... <laughs> And uh, additionally, this week, we have the Combating Anti-Blackness Work Group meeting starting at 5.30. Uh, actually, prior to that, we have the Technology Use Committee at 3.30 on the same date, August 24th, followed by the Combating Anti-Blackness Work Group at 5.30. And then Thursday, we have an, a webinar for parents for the Off and Away campaign starting at 6. And we've decided to do three Thursdays in a row. So this Thursday would be the first one. Next Thursday will be at 3.30. And then the last Thursday would be on back at 6 p.m. again, just to give parents uh, several opportunities to uh, come in here about the campaign and, and share any concerns or any questions they may have with us. And those will be run by Ms. Edison and her team. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you for those updates and coming in. And we have a list of future. Uh, Ms. Ms. Alvarez, do you um, have a question? For future agenda items, I'd like for us to start discussing dates. Uh, we had we have several uh, future agenda items listed here. Yes. I think we should start thinking, putting a date to those, mm -hmm. and also to start uh, thinking of a date so that we can do our a budget study session that we yes. said we would do. Mm -hmm. Also to allow the staff uh, time for planning because they're really busy. So I'd like for us to start considering that maybe at the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and then, so with that, that was my comment too, as a future items when you start to this, so thank you. And so our next meeting is September 13th, 2022, right here in this, in person, also be able to um, participate virtually, 5.30. Thank you so much for everyone. Excuse me? Hello. Um, oh, Ms. sims -Moten? Yes. Oh, yes. sorry about that. I'd also like to add for future agenda items. Okay. Sorry, I'd like to add a uh, recognition of disability history week, the second week of October. Okay. Okay. And for us to draft a resolution, you know, in that Mr. regard. 
Okay, I'm just hearing from Dr. Maldonado that Mr. Shelter is working on that resolution. Okay, great. Thank you, okay. President Molinos. Thank you. Okay, so next meeting, September 13th, here in this evening, 5.30 we start. Thank you so much for being here this evening, both virtually and in person, and thank you for your work. Good evening. Have a good night.